little boy said to his father, who was a pastor, Dave, when you stand up to preach, I always say a prayer. His father glowed at the thought that his son prayed for him when he went to preach. He said, tell me, son, what, what prayer do you pray when daddy gets up to preach? The boy said, I pray, now I lay me down to sleep. Henry David Thoreau once wrote, he had six chairs in his house. One chair for solitude, two chairs for friendship, and three chairs for society. Solitude is important. Spending time in prayer and, and meditation helps us focus ourselves on God, on God's will, and in our place in God's kingdom. On a clear sunny day, take a powerful micro, uh, mi powerful magnifying glass, a stack of newspapers, and go outside for an experiment. Hold the magnifying glass over the pile of crumpled, crumpled up newspapers. And though you are magnifying the power of the sun's rays through the glass lens, you'll never start a fire if you keep moving the magnifying glass around. But if you hold the magnifying glass still, allowing it to focus the rays of the sun, sun's energy, and a concentrated beam on the pile of newspapers, you harness the power of the sun multiplied by the magnifying glass and you can start a fire. There is power in prayer. When we spend time with God and we focus our attention on him, we are strengthened. We give God a chance to, to center our lives on Jesus, to kindle within our spirit, the holy fire and that, that burning desire to serve God's kingdom and God's love. Prayer for a Christian is like breathing. Just as breathing is a response to the physical life, to the presence of air, so prayer is a response to the spiritual life the presence of God. In breathing there is life for our physical bodies. In praying there is life for our spirit. Spending time with God is important, crucial, for we want to, to cultivate a friendship with God. But we can't spend all our lives in the chair of solitude. Jesus calls us to step out into the world. Jesus modeled for us friendship. From his calling of the twelve disciples, to his friendship with Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and in his final journey to the cross, Jesus shows us how it is to be a friend. The story is told of a soldier who asked his commanding officer if he might go out into no man's land between the trenches in World War I to bring one of his comrades who lay grievously wounded. And the officer said, you certainly can go, but it won't be worth it. Your friend is probably dead. And by going, you'll throw away your own life as well. But the man went. And somehow, he managed to get his friend hoisted on his shoulder and bring him back to the trenches. And the two of them tumbled in together and lay at the bottom of the trench. 
the officer looked very tenderly on the would-be rescuer. And he said, I, I, I told you it wouldn't be worth it. Your friend is dead and now you are mortally wounded. But it was worth it, he said. What do you mean? The officer asked. What do you mean it was worth it? Your friend is dead. And the young soldier at, answered, yes, sir. But it was worth it because when I got to him, he was not. He was still alive. And he said to me, Jim, I knew you would come. God has always called us into community. It's not good for man to be alone, God said in the garden. We are called to be friends to one another, to share life's hard times and life's celebrations, to walk hand in hand together, to work side by side with one another. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus calls us his friends. I no longer call you servants, he said. Instead, I have called you friends. Realize, friends, that friendship takes time. We have to use some of our time to make friendships work. Time to friendship is like water to a plant. We must, dis we must dedicate some of our time if we want friendship to grow. It will also take some sacrifice to be a friend, like, like the man in the story I just told, who was willing to give up his own life for his friend and his friendship. Like Jesus, who called us friends and then showed us the extent to which he was willing to go for that friendship all the way to the cross. We have to be willing to give something up for the sake of the friendship. It takes persons willing to take the time and to make the sacrifice to make friendship work. And we are called to friendship. But just as we couldn't spend all our life in the chair of solitude, we cannot spend all our time in the chair of friendship. God calls us to be involved in the world. In the Old Testament lesson, the prophet says for God, it's too light a thing that you should be my servant to rise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. In other words, it's not good enough for me to send you only to save your friends. I will also give you as a light to the nations, he said, that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. We are called to extend the love of God's friendship to the world. An old monk prayed for many years for a vision from God to strengthen his faith, but it never came. He had almost given up hope when one day while he was praying, a vision appeared. The old, old monk was overjoyed, but then right in the middle of the vision, the monastery bell rang. It was time, time to feed the poor who had lined up at the mon mon <laughs> monastery gate. Well, the old monk was torn between his earthly duties and his heavenly vision that he'd been waiting for for many, many, many years. However, before the bell stopped tolling, the, the monk had made his decision. With heavy heart, he, he turned his back on his vision and went to feed the poor. 
nearly an hour later, the monk returned to his room. And when he opened the door, he could not believe it. He could not believe it. There in the room was the vision waiting for him. As the monk dropped to his knees, the vision said, My son, if you hadn't gone off to feed the poor, I would not have stayed. So each of these chairs are necessary. We need to sit in the chair of solitude so that we can be strengthened and centered in Jesus so that our friendship with God can flourish. We need to sit in the, in the chair of friendship to be lifted up and supported in our relationships with our friends. And we need to sit in the chair of community to reach out into our society to help those who are in need, to offer God's healing love to those in pain in this world, that they may see God's light and become a part of the covenant community to be counted amongst God's friends. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen.